this is tin metal that was deposited on the cathode in our tin metal acid and electricity video. And here's a little bit more. So we're going to put it in the speaker on the super scientific hot plate and we're going to start the next step of our refining process. I am 3 no 3 Thank you for watching. Warning. Acids are corrosive and their fumes are dangerous. Protect yourself. So in the beaker here, we're going to add about 100 milliliters of this two molar technical grade hydrochloric acid. It's actually the last of this bottle. And then we're going to add about 100 milliliters of this transchem muriatic acid, which is also hydrochloric acid. If you want to know more about the acids I'm using, you can watch my hydrochloric acid versus muriatic acid video. If you didn't watch my tin metal acid and electricity video, I do encourage you to go back and watch so you will know how we got to this point. All of this substance was collected by electrochemistry. We started with a tin ingot that was supposed to be 96% pure that we melted down in the melting tin metal video. And right now we're running this on low heat and you can start to see a little bit of a reaction here. There's some tiny bubbles, but because of these colors, it's not showing up that well on video. The lead chloride and sulfate from tin metal video that I put out yesterday was the proof that there was lead in this tin ingot. I contacted the seller from eBay that sold me the tin ingot and I discovered that the source of his tin was from melted pewter figurines. Here you can see that most everything that is going to dissolve has dissolved and there's just this black residue left. So next we'll run it through a paper filter and hopefully what we'll have in the filter it will be some really pure stannous chloride. All of this black substance that's left over is probably lead, but it could also contain antimony and copper. This time, since I only used the hydrochloric acid and didn't add any hydrogen peroxide or other oxidizer, the lead would not have dissolved very much at all into the hydrochloric acid. Antimony and copper also don't dissolve in hydrochloric acid. And now you can see we have a very clear filtrate that hopefully is pure stannous chloride. So now we're going to add the stannous chloride filtrate to this Pyrex baking dish and set up another tin cell and see what kind of luck we have this time. Off camera, I added some distilled water and now I'm hooking up the red, which will be our anode. It's hooked up to the positive of the power supply. And for our anode, we're going to use one of the cathodes that I left the spongy, mossy tin substance on. I actually compressed that down as it was going so it would be more tightly packed and stick to the copper wire better. For the cathode, we're going to use the other cathode from the last video that is copper wire that has tin plating on it. And this is going to get hooked up to the black wire, the negative of the power supply. And then we'll turn on the power supply. So now that we have this all set up with more pure materials, hopefully we'll get better results than the last one. I'm going to continue to work with this tin and I will probably do more follow-up videos after this one. Here are some close-ups sped up to 64 times normal speed.
Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. The end.